Welcome to our webinar this afternoon. Due to the current pandemic, many are looking to reevaluate their careers, whether they were forced to because of furloughs or layoffs, or may currently own a business that has been changed due to the coronavirus and may be looking for their next business opportunity. In this webinar, we will talk about the franchise model and why being in a franchise is more important than ever. We will discuss how financing plays a role in starting your business, especially in the current credit climate. Lastly, we will talk about what goes into finding a location for your business. My name is Jeff Brazier, and I am the Chief Development Officer for Kitty Academy. I oversee the development of our academies that begins with the awarding of a franchise, through lending and site selection of a Kitty Academy, and ultimately through construction and getting your doors open. We have a great panel of experts with us today. Starting off the discussion will be Brock Silberzahn, our VP of Real Estate, I'm sorry, VP of Franchise Development. Brock has been with Kitty Academy for seven years. Following Brock will be Kevin Schaefer, our VP of Finance, to discuss lending to open your business. Kevin has been with the company since 2015 and previously worked for a, a different franchise educational company. Lastly, Greg Owens will discuss the real estate process. Greg joined us in 2017 and came to us from the quick service food industry. Before we get started, please feel free to post any questions in the questions box and we will answer them at the end of this webinar. Now I will kick it over to Brock to get us started. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate your time this afternoon and hosting the uh, the webinar. Uh, let's start uh, with the basics. What what is franchising? Uh, franchising is a unique business concept that first appeared here in the United States back in the mid 1800s, with the Singer Selling Machine Company forming a franchise model in 1851. The franchise industry really began to gain some momentum back in the 1950s, with hundreds of companies embracing the concept. Today, there are thousands of franchise concepts which provide opportunities, both large and small, across hundreds of different products, services, and industries. Each and every year, franchise businesses create new jobs and career opportunities for those seeking employment. The franchising business model creates a true win-win opportunity, allowing individuals with an entrepreneurial spirit an opportunity to own and operate their very own businesses without having to recreate the wheel. So why franchising? The old adage in franchising is you are in business for yourself, but not by yourself. This has never been a more important variable in the world of business than it is today. COVID-19 has abruptly impacted business on a large scale and small business owners are forced to adjust as best they can. This is when having the large support system that a proven franchise concept offers is most valuable. From vendor relationships and the navigation of the Paycheck Protection Program to operational and marketing support, that can help pivot your business in a time of change. The franchise commodity is critical to the future viability of a franchisee's business or businesses. Fortunately, and unlike most new business landscapes, this support and stability comes with the territory in the franchising industry. Why now? First, let's talk about downtime. With more time on everyone's hands today to conduct research, more folks have an opportunity to truly become an, an expert on franchising and dig into a potential business opportunity. If utilized to their advantage, this time frame will allow a prospective franchisee to learn more about the business of franchising and how it engages its customers. It is also a good time to connect with other franchisees virtually to learn how their franchisors might be helping them in this time of need. This will give prospective franchisees a very good understanding of how they may be treated when faced with and how to navigate any unforeseen challenges that come during their time as a business owner. Great rates. For those with good credit, strong financial resources, and a solid franchise concept behind them, today offers a chance to obtain some very favorable rates and terms. The banking industry has been temporarily impacted by the workload from the Paycheck Protection Program, but as the dust begins to settle, they'll be looking for opportunities to new franchise owners with rates and terms many have never seen before, 
and that could be you. Moving to real estate. One of the biggest elements to consider is the commercial real estate market. Location has always been an important factor in the success of a business. And now there could be many more opportunities to take advantage of this in terms of the availability of commercial real estate. Costs have risen over the last several years, but now may start to decrease in price and increase in available inventory. When you're looking to sign a long-term lease, acquiring a piece of land, or an existing property. And then the job market. These days, everyone knows at least one person who has recently been furloughed or even lost their job. That said, the ability to create new jobs is one that should not be ignored. Capitalizing on the recent shift in business and the economy in the way of franchising could eventually give others the opportunity for employment. If you have the means to simultaneously benefit yourself and others, wouldn't now be a great time to consider that opportunity? When it comes to our franchise owners, the vast majority did not originally have a background in the early childhood education industry. So prior experience in the industry is, that you're looking at is not mandatory in many instances. Many of our franchise prospects come to us from the corporate world, from a wide variety of services and industries. We find that having a corporate background really prepares these folks well for franchise ownership. The skills that you learned in your corporate career, things like time management, teamwork, management of staff, communication, are many of the key experiences that you'll directly apply to your time as a business owner. These skills are all transferable and they put you in a great position when you're ready to run your own business. Here are just a few advantages your corporate experience may provide. Credibility. Building a successful career in the corporate world gives you instant credibility when you step out to go into business for yourself. Culture. You've seen firsthand the importance that creating a positive culture with good chemistry plays in maintaining a positive workplace. You can use many of the same culture building practices you saw in the corporate environment and put them to work for you in your business. Process. The list of important processes that you've been exposed to while working for others gives you an enormous advantage in running your own business. This includes skills such as time management, budgeting, sales, collaboration, strategic planning, and attention to detail. Management. Your experience managing others provides you with valuable practice in hiring the right people, building and supervising a team, setting professional development goals, and mentoring. Over the years, we found that some of the best franchise candidates are entrepreneurial in nature. They have a wide, diverse set of professional experiences. They have a strong desire for work-life harmony, which our industry provides, as our academies are closed nights and weekends. Our most successful franchise owners understand and appreciate what parents are looking for in the way of high-quality, educational child care facilities. Additionally, and most importantly, they want to make a difference in their communities and have a positive impact upon the lives of children for many, many years to come. Thank you, Brock, for your insight. Now to discuss lending for your business is Kevin Schaefer, our VP of Finance. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Brock did a great job uh, overviewing uh, the different reasons why someone will want to begin to own a business now and why franchising is a great uh, idea for that. One of the things he talked about as far as financing was great interest rates, and he's correct. I would underline that. I mean, we have historically low interest rates for those borrowing to start a business. The flip side of that, of course, is it's a tight credit market, which I think Brock mentioned also, um, as lenders try to sort through their portfolio of loans at this point and anticipate what's going to happen going forward with business. One of the advantages for a, a entrepreneur who's interested in opening their own business as they consider the franchise concept is some of the resources that the franchisor can provide. You know, first of all, as the franchise candidate uh, analyzes the business and looks at the opportunities uh, for the different markets, 
you know, after becoming a franchisee, most brands provide um, resources that help in uh, help the franchisee to analyze uh, different opportunities, typically a pro forma template um, to evaluate the business model as well as evaluate markets and individual sites. Uh, there's resources that franchisors provide to the franchisee, you know, whether it's assistance in financing and site selection with real estate, uh, construction, if that is uh, an element of the franchise concept that you're looking at, as well as licensing and operations. All those resources help uh, a new business owner uh, to gain confidence in their ability to move forward with the business and the concept that they're looking at. It also uh, takes those resources together with that pro forma that we mentioned, together with a business plan template and personal financial statements to put together a package to go to a lender once you've decided what business you want to invest in. And a franchisor will be able to support you in putting that information together. And uh, franchisors have direct relationships with lenders uh, lenders who understand the uh, individual franchise concept, who you know, know the brand impact, the value of that, have in most cases already uh, been lending to other franchisees of the concept, and they appreciate the solid business analysis that the new franchisee can provide in the financing package. So even in a tight credit market like this, uh, the advantage of working together with a sophisticated franchisor that has been around for a number of years, that has developed strong bank relationships, means that even in a difficult credit environment, loans and financing are available for new franchisees entering these concepts. We should probably talk a bit about the different types of loans that you would probably be uh, considering if you did decide to own your own business, whether it's franchise, or not. Typically, what we see across franchising is about 90% of new franchise units are financed through Small Business Administration or SBA financing. And the reason that that number is so high is because of the second uh, item that's listed on the slide, which is a much lower cash injection. Typically, a cash injection on a project is about 10% to 20% of the overall project versus on a conventional loan, that cash injection may be 25% to 40%. So that makes a significant difference, uh, irregardless of the franchise concept that you're looking at, um, whether you're looking to lease or whether you're looking to purchase. Uh, that reduced cash injection is a big, uh, certainly a big advantage. The other um, advantage from an SBA standpoint is the third bullet uh, on that comparison chart, which is even during uh, tight credit markets such as what we're in now, SBA loans remain available. The SBA is continuing to guarantee loans in order to encourage businesses to open, uh, to employ uh, people, and to grow the economy. So you're, you're looking with the uh, Small Business Administration loans uh, to have that opportunity for guaranteed lending at uh, lower cash injection. Uh, it's flexible. There are options. There's different programs for both leased or purchased uh, facilities. And it uh, is ideal for new owners coming into a business, especially when they're new to the business, uh, such as coming into the early education business. It allows you the, <clears throat> excuse me, it also allows, because the SBA loans are done through an individual bank, franchisees that have existing bank relationships can still leverage those relationships with their local lenders. Franchisors typically have strong relationships with national lenders uh, that they can provide uh, those uh, resources to the franchisees, they could compare local rates versus national rates. Uh, franchisors are typically uh, registered with the SBA up front, so they're approved for SBA lending from that standpoint, which also facilitates you know, getting a loan to open the concept that you choose. So we've talked a little bit about the overall finance market. We've talked a little bit about the different types of loans. I'd highlight again kind of the franchising advantages from a finance standpoint. 
after you make the decision to own your own business and you've decided what franchise concept is best for you, then you find a site and you obtain your loan. There's still benefits you know, as far as being part of a franchise system from finance standpoint. I mean, the benefit financially of being in a franchise system is um, one, you see accelerated business opening, uh, mainly because you have resources behind you with the franchisor to assist you in getting uh, your space ready to open, uh, go through any licensing that you may need and be able to open in a more timely manner. Uh, it, also, the franchisor provides proven uh, business operating procedures in many cases, you know, tried and true, as Brock said, for a long time, franchising has been a very stable concept and many of the large brands have been open for 20 or 30 years with hundreds of locations in order to prove the concept. The power of the brand is also impactful uh, throughout franchising because years of operating has also created years of brand awareness for a number of franchise brands which helps you as a business owner as you're beginning to open up, you know, if you're new to the market or if you're another location in an existing market uh, for your franchise concept. Another advantage that you also, we often see and we have franchisees talk to us about is the benefit of not just working with the operations team of the franchisor, but also utilizing relationships and shared business you know, experience and best practices with other franchisees. You know, the franchisees are really you know, the, one, the heartbeat of any system, and they're the ones dealing with the, uh, uh, the individual customers on a daily basis. So the ability to work with another franchisee, one who's been in the system before, one who's been successful, who's been through what you've been before, who's been through what you're going through now as you open a business is a tremendous advantage. Um, it also allows dedicated resources within the operations team for when you have questions. Every business owner has questions and you have a resource within your franchisor to answer those questions in the process. And one other big advantage um, of the franchise concept from a finance standpoint is after you open your first location and you find that you enjoy the business and you're successful at that, it's often very easy to open a second or third location to be able to expand your business by opening more locations. That's typical across all franchise concepts uh, that once you have proven your success with your first location, uh, additional locations are even easier to finance and uh, quite frankly, uh, you're an ideal candidate for the franchise or at that point because you have proven success behind you. Uh, the other uh, and probably final finance uh, opportunity and benefit I would mention within franchising is you have the opportunity to you know, lease the space that you're interested in once you select your site and your location or to purchase the space. It can be a standalone property in many cases or inline retail. But you'll have resources within your franchise or that can help you make those re uh, real estate decisions um, it's a tough credit market now, and it's a very interesting real estate market, so it's nice to have those additional resources to be able to gain insight as you look to uh, support your community. So I'd say that's probably a good segue to turn the webinar back over to Jeff Brazier for some additional real estate uh, support uh, discussion topics. Thank you, Kevin, for sharing your knowledge with our group today. Uh, now to discuss uh, how to find a location for your business uh, is Greg Owens, uh, as I mentioned earlier, our VP of Real Estate. Thank you, Jeff. As we, most of us have probably heard with, with real estate, is the old adage, location, location, location. Whether it's looking for a home or looking for commercial real estate, this is a critical step in the process. Choosing the right franchise to invest in is probably your fir first major decision that you're going to make. Second to that is going to be the choice of a location. We want to make sure that in choosing that location that you have all of the information and all of the tools available so that you can make the right choice for long-term success. 
You only get one chance to get it right, so preparation is key. Franchisors have already spent a lot of time and a lot of resources to establish the types of locations that are best suited for their brand's business model. We think about the advantages of not having to devote significant time and significant money on your own. The franchisor takes on that role and has proven that model and is one of the reasons that you're going to be seeking a successful franchise that has been through that process and has, has shown that it works. Um, one of the things to think about in terms of locations is concept of main, main and main versus destination locations. So we think about main and main locations in a market and what, what are those top locations? Well, those are prime corners in a market that generally offer a maximum exposure um, and, and it does come usually at a, a premium price. Think about drug stores, fast food, um, convenience stores. Those are the users that typically want to be on those high profile locations. The other side of that would be a destination location. Yeah, des destination can be secondary um, and there are advantages to those which reduces the cost of that real estate as long as it still provides the right site criteria to become a good location. Um, think about those instances where doctor's offices or insurance companies, even a kitty academy, that you're, you're seeking them out. Um, locations must be a fit for the market. Again, going back to uh, the franchisor's research that has been done for their brand, you are going to want to position yourself to be in the best position against the competition that's in the market. Uh, things to consider in that are, are the competition, uh, your competitors mostly in freestanding buildings? Are they in retail centers? Maybe they're in office locations or depending on the franchise, non-traditional locations. A lot of those factors will, will come into play in developing that strategy of, of where you would want to locate in the market for your business. The main thing there too is you don't want to start off in a location that is inferior or out positioned by your competition. So in, in looking at overall, it, it sounds obvious that locations are important, but when you really dive into the why, again, it kind of goes back to me of you get one chance to get it right. And with a franchise, you've got opportunity for the best success in learning from the franchise or who's had that, uh, that trial and error along the way. Now, if we take locations a step further into more of the, the science, I guess, behind it, <clears throat> is when we get into the demographics and analytics. This is where we want to begin to develop a roadmap. We know the importance of securing that, that top location, that best site, but there's also a lot of research that's done to know where you need to search who your customers are. Franchisors generally have access to the best data, the best analytic sources, and the people who can help interpret that, that data. So understanding and analyzing the data in order to best position a site to serve your core customers is key. We need to know the general area that we want to locate in, why we want to locate in that area, who are we trying to target by locating in that area, are we accessible to them. So it, it goes deeper than just understanding from a census data model that you have access to going online to see some census data. There's a myriad of other opportunities to really dive into a market with data and, and demographics specific to each franchisor's business, each brand. What are the, the drivers in the market? Another thing that's important for us to look at, you know, are there large neighborhoods, there's housing growth, maybe the, the brand is, needs to be positioned near large employers, hospitals, even industrial parks, transportation hubs, universities depending on the customer you're trying to serve, will dictate 
where those uh, opportunities are that provide best location opportunity. The analysis that the franchisors com have completed and understand where the trade area is that best serves these customers. Again, when we say these customers, who are the customers? Again, this is a lot of time devoted uh, to this process by franchisors to make sure that they understand who these customers are. You know, who are their target customers and how do we reach them? That goes into demographics as well as psychographics. These play a key role in understanding who these customers are, the best way to market to them, the best way to get the message across, um, and what types of media should be used to reach them. So we're looking at demographics overall. You know, it is one piece of the puzzle in the overall process. There are also many other variables that are taken into account to get the complete picture of the right market and the right location. It, overall advantage that I see, you know, that a franchise or can offer is you're joining a, a system. You don't have to be an expert in everything. You just need to surround yourself with those that are. Commercial real estate in general can be tough to navigate, especially in the times of the pandemic. But with a franchise, as Brock has mentioned before, you are not alone. And I'll turn it back over to Jeff. Thank you, Greg, for your expertise. Uh, hopefully this information was helpful as you contemplate starting your own business. Now I'd like to take the opportunity to answer a few questions. As I mentioned earlier, if you have any questions, you can pose them in the box. Uh, one of the questions, uh, and this would be for Brock, uh, what is the best way to get started when looking to open a franchise? Uh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, a lot of franchisors today will provide a, a great deal of information online. Uh, so obviously, the, uh, the Internet's a great resource of information as it pertains to the, the franchise opportunities that they provide. So you can do a lot of research on your own. But ultimately, I feel that individuals would be best um, positioned to speak with a, a member of the franchisor's development team whether it's their you know, vice president of franchise development, their director of development, a manager, someone inside the organization who is extremely well-versed in the franchise opportunities that they provide that can better outline a lot of the support, the assistance, and the guidance that they would uh, provide to you ultimately as a potential member of their franchise community. Uh, but I think you know, one of the best ways to gain insight into a franchise opportunity is getting access to the franchisor's franchise disclosure document, or what we refer to in the industry as the FDD. Um, the FDD provides a plethora of information about the franchise opportunity, but usually before a franchisor will provide that to a potential franchise candidate, they want to gain a little information about uh, the candidate's background. So you typically need to uh, supply some information online um, to, to better assist them in engaging if you are potentially you know, eligible uh, based on some financial minimums uh, and experience that they're um, you know, looking for. So I would encourage folks to submit some basic information online, uh, have a conversation with a member of the development team with the franchisor that you're looking at, and ultimately find out how you can gain access to their FDD. Um, some important areas of the FDD would include item seven, where you'll typically find a breakdown of the cost associated with uh, getting started with that organization. Uh, another great area of um, information can be found in item 19, where a franchisor has the opportunity to provide financial performance representations, or what they call FPRs. Uh, some will provide a great deal of information about the existing uh, units inside of their organization, like we do here at Kitty Academy. Others may only provide a little bit of information, but uh, certainly you want to take a close look uh, at item 19 because it will provide financial information about the performance of their existing uh, units and locations. And then typically the uh, FDD will also include a template of the franchise agreement. 
which obviously is an important um, piece of information to review because it'll allow you an opportunity to learn what your obligations might be as a member of their franchise community. And likewise, what are their legal obligations as the franchisor to support your time and effort? Um, so just to recap, you know, online research uh, is obviously very easy and can be done at your convenience, but also, uh, you know, get in touch with a member of their development team, ultimately provide them some information so that they know that you're uh, serious about uh, your inquiry, and then find out how you can gain access to their franchise disclosure document. Thank you for that advice, Brock. Uh, another question uh, we have here is for Kevin Schaefer. Uh, should I look to get pre-approved for a loan before looking for a franchise? Oh, that's a that's a great question. Oftentimes, uh, franchisees, as they're evaluating uh, different concepts, have that pre-approval idea in the back of their mind. Many times, because uh, the the only other significant investment they may have made in their lives have been their homes, and it's pretty natural to get a, a pre-approval ahead of time before making an offer on a home. It's a bit different uh, with a franchise and with a business, though, because uh, while you can go to a bank and a bank can tell you that your financial background would be sufficient for them to loan you some money, um, the bank in the end, before they can really do an approval, is going to, under, is going to need to understand the, the, con the franchise concept itself or the business concept and is going to need to see the you know, financial projections related to the business. So um, it, you can take the time to talk to a bank first, but I'd encourage you if you're with a, you know, what I would term a very reliable franchisor in the process of accumulating the information that Brock mentioned, you know, the preliminary questionnaire or personal financial statements, uh, the franchisor will be able to look at that information to determine with the network of lenders that they have, if it's likely the candidate will be able to obtain financing for the uh, franchise investment. Uh, the franchisor and the franchisee both want to enter into a relationship where they know that they can move forward and they can open the unit. So it's you know, one of those times when everyone is in uh, sync as far as what they want to do. Uh, the other you know, piece that you'll also see typically before you go to an initial meeting with a franchise or is they'll ask for a credit report you know, so they can do the credit check, look at your outstanding you know, credit, um, how successful that's been, how strong your report is, which helps them also determine if they believe they'll be able to obtain financing. So that's probably a very long answer for a, a very short question in that you don't need to be pre-approved with a bank before approaching a franchise or um, you, you'll just need to share a bit of information with them and they'll be able to give you some guidance in that regard. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, and the last uh, question I have here uh, pertains to real estate. Um, if I wanted to own more than one location, so essentially be a multi-unit owner, uh, should I look to lease my locations or purchase the real estate? Uh, and this question is for Greg Owens. That is a great question. And I think there there's two points uh, to consider with that. One is your access to capital. Um, obviously, if you're, you're wanting to do more than one location, you need to be able to um, have the capabilities to put that outlay of, of capital to work. The other thing to consider with that would be the pace of growth. So in looking at purchase opportunities, you know, obviously those are going to be a little bit more capital intensive. Again, going back to the access to capital, um, there, there's a lot of advantages to owning the real estate. But I would say that if you're looking for opportunities to grow your pace of growth uh, quicker, leasing might be a, a, a good choice for you. It, it allows you to use less capital um, for each project and generally will uh, facilitate that growth better than uh, purchase, uh, especially you know if you have certain lender guidelines involved, you may not be able to lease after you do a purchase because you may be up against certain uh, uh, maximum lending limits. 
few things to uh, to consider in there, but I would just generally say if if you're looking for a faster growth pace, um, leasing would be a a good way to go. And I think Greg too. I think it would be a good conversation to have uh, when they're going through the process with someone in their franchise development department. So uh, appreciate that insight and feedback. Uh, that is all the questions uh, we have for this webinar. Uh, thanks again to everyone listening and to our panel of Brock, uh, Kevin, and Greg. Uh, Brock will follow up with everyone uh, with his contact information. Uh, should anyone have any additional questions uh, or any guidance that we could provide as you contemplate uh, opening your own business. Uh, I wish everyone good health uh, during this time and, uh, and a great afternoon. Thanks again.